G'day, my name's Dan, and we're going to continue our series on creating a Cyberpunk Red rule set using the rule set wizard for Fantasy Grounds. Uh, today, I've decided to throw in a video on the graphics. And this is not really about coding, it's not really about the rule set wizard so much, but it's about the graphics. And the graphics is an important part of it. You want your rule set to look and feel uh, good, you want it to look and feel like the game system that you're playing, and this, um, you can get, you know, you can really dive into this and go a long way, or you can do a few simple things that will really make this uh, system look like you, you hope it will, you want it to. So what I do is I go through the uh, official um, RPG book and or the character sheet, and I look for some inspiration, and uh, the cyberpunk red one has got this really bold character sheet which it's predominantly red, white and black um, with also this um, shaded grey red colour so I'm going to take most of my cues from this, I mean we're, we're concentrating on the character sheet to start with but we can see that um, in the left top and left bottom corners we can see that sort of thicker frame uh, we've got this sort of frame around here and um, we're going to use that element, and we can also see that we've got this this smaller element with the corner sort of filled in, uh, sort of blocky uh, colours there. And um, again, I mentioned the red, white, and black. And as well, we've got um, this element here, which is fairly similar. We've got a sort of solid colour here with the corner chopped off. And I've pinched all three of those. Um, I've pinched the colours, and I've pinched those corners, I pinched the white box with a solid frame in the corner blocked out, and then the solid corner, uh, the solid box with the corner missing. I pinched all of those elements to sort of make out our frames so far. So let's have a quick look at what we've got. So our character sheet, we can see, has the frame corner, it's top left and um, bottom left, and on the right hand side we've sort of left that empty for the moment. Um, one little subtle thing I did was you can see on the top edges, top edge and the bottom edge, the uh, the body of the frame, the bulk of the frame sits um, inside a line that's inside those corner brackets. What I did is on the left hand edge, I flipped that and I pushed the uh, containing line, that red line, I pushed it to the outside edge of those corner brackets and filled that in. And that's just a little subtle variation. So that's that's what we've got to work with just at the moment. So the biggest, the next biggest element on the tabletop is obviously the chat box. And so we're going to create a frame for the chat box. And what I'm going to do, I'm keeping it simple, I'm going to use the same inspiration I used for the character sheet. I'm going to use that for the chat box. So we'll flip over to uh, uh, my GIMP and what we can see here is, I'm going to zoom in this a little bit, it's basically exactly the same frame, but I've got corners in all four corners, and instead of pushing out the left edge to the edge of the page, I've pushed, out, pushed up the top and the bottom edges, so I've moved that red line that constrains the bulk of the page, um, I pushed it being, from being inside the frame edges to being on the edge of the boundaries or the limits of this this image and my left and right ones are not so that's that's the first part but what I'm going to do is as well I'm going to add one more part to this I'm going to just add and it's quite subtle I've just added a white layer just behind those edges not the whole frame I can see my corners are still transparent um, and I've also made this layer uh, transparent so it's 50% opaque um, and that's going to allow some of the background elements or anything that's sitting underneath this just to bleed through a little bit. So I'm going to export this. We're going to export this as a chat box. And um, I also found something, found out something today. Um, so a new version of the rule set was a drop, and it gives a warning that my image DPI is incorrect. Now, Fantasy Grounds doesn't care about dots per inch, and in fact, 
a lot of the time the computer doesn't understand dots per inch because it displays each pixel in the size pixels um, it, as the size pixel of your um, monitor screen. So your monitor is, is an LED or LCD and it's got fixed size pixels and um, so DPI really doesn't matter so much there because it's really working on pixels per inch rather than dots per inch. Um, but the rule set wizard does lock itself into a particular DPI. So what you want to do is when you um, create your images you want to set them up so that they are going to use 96 by 96 pixels per inch. It's 96 by 96 pixels per inch. Um, and if you've got existing images in GIMP, what we do is hit the scale button and we change this here to pixels per inch and we change the X and Y to 96. And that will allow it to load properly in the rule set wizard. Now you might have noticed from some of my previous videos that some of my elements weren't really showing up properly uh, inside the wizard. You could see them but the size wasn't quite right. And that was this whole uh, DPI mismatch. I was using 300 by 300 um, and changing this to 96 by 96. Now all of these elements are visible in the wizard as well as in fantasy grounds. They were always just playing fine in fantasy grounds. Anyway, we're going to move on. So I've created this chat box image. We, um, we've exported it. So I'm going to create a new frame. Now, later on I'll show you where to get all these frame names from. We've got a frame name here called chat box. Um, that shouldn't be there. Just uh, creating it now. Um, so what we want to do is edit the, this chat box. So we're giving it a name chat box. I'm using the frame offset 50, 50, 50, 50, and I'll show you where that comes from in a moment. And I'm grabbing this image uh, from where I've exported these files to. And it's uh, chatbox.png open that up and we can see it's showing it up properly here. Now what we can't see is the white gradient edges here because they're um, white on white so they're not going to show up but they will show up on our fantasy grounds table then. So let's just export this first and generate the rule set into the right folder and we will reload our tabletop and we can see now we have a much more thematic um, frame for our chat window and I'm going to uh, also fire up the character sheet so we can see that it's a, just a small subtle difference here right you can see that these borders are sort of opposite to each other these corners on the top um, one goes to right to the edge of the frame and the other one goes only to the edge of the corner brackets and it's reversed on the sides However, we've also just got this subtle edge here. Of course, I'm going to change this a million times before I finish this um, tutorial. You know, I'll tweak things as I go along. Now, we also might find that the color is just a little bit too bold when we have so much white on the screen. So I'm going to just drop a light gray layer with a low opacity right over the top and we're going to export that in over the top. But I won't do that just yet. What I want to do is show you the nine slices. So what we've got is um, the top left, top right, bottom left, and bottom right corners do not scale or tile. They have fixed size, fixed position. So we can see here, you can see up here in my grid, that these are 50 pixels it's 50 pixels wide to where this element becomes uniform and it's 50 pixels tall before this side becomes uniform so what we've done is we've created a slice on the left 50 pixels in and we create a slice from the top 50 pixels down and that way we get our left edge and 
we also have the makings of uh, the, the top right and the, the bottom left. So when we uh, define that those lines here, we get uh, a total of nine slices. So we have our top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. Then we also have our top, our bottom, and our left, and our right. Now, our top and bottom can tile. They don't scale or stretch, they tile, and they tile horizontally. So if this image is less wide than this frame, then it will show less of the top and the bottom, but it will show all of the corners. Now if we make the image taller or shorter, it will show more or less of the left and the right. They will tile vertically, or it will only show as much of it as it can to fill up the dimensions that it's required to. And of course, the ninth frame is our middle frame, and that one will tile vertically and horizontally to fill whatever space is left over. So that's how our image is, is created there. We've got um, our corners, uh, top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right, fixed sizes. And in this case, they're generated with 50 pixels from the left, 50 pixels from the top, 50 pixels from the right, 50 pixels from the bottom. I know I'm repeating myself a lot, but it's really important you understand how that works. And that's really important when you want to make these images. We can have a look at these other ones. This is scaled right up. Okay, I'm just going to zoom in on that a little bit. And when we defined the offsets for this image, I used 8 across, okay, which gets to here. And I used 8 down, which gets to here. And that way, because the only element on here that won't tile smoothly is the left hand corner, top left hand corner. So we want to make sure that we're coming in 8 pixels from the left, 8 pixels from the top. That's critical. When we go from the right, I've nominated a an offset of 4 and 4 from the bottom. And that will tile just beautifully. Uh, when we've got the solid box colors, I've basically done exactly the same thing. 8 in from the left, 8 in from the top, 4 in from the right, 4 up from the bottom. And again, they will tile nicely. So that's how um, I start to build up the graphical elements on the um, Fantasy Grounds tabletop. We can see that we've also got a combat tracker. And what we'll notice on the combat tracker as opposed to the other elements is that there are some elements here that by default the text is white. So we want some to think that perhaps this frame might have a few darker elements um, because of the white text um, in there. Now we can always change that text color, but typically the combat tracker is a darker frame. It's just a, one of those things. We've also got a party sheet. The party sheet um, will be a record that we will reuse several times. Um, the It'll be quite a generic um, sheet and you'll see why as we look at some of these other ones. The calendar, so the calendar can use the same frame as the party sheet. And then we've got some utilities. So we've got, um, uh, this is a utility box. Uh, this is a record sheet box. This is another utility box, but it's actually box two, as opposed to this one. And then we've got, uh, that's the same, same box. And then we've got all of our campaign tools. Okay, so our character selection is another unique window. And again, typically this one's quite a dark one. It doesn't have to be. Um, but that's a, another typically unique window. But the rest of these campaign tools, you'll see that this again uses the same frame as our party sheet did. And images and notes uses the same frame. And tables uses the same frame. So there's a few frames that we're able to reuse. We only have to create them once. Uh, assets, different frame. Library, different frame. Although library is the same frame as character selection. And it's also um, a similar frame to what is used in reference manuals. So quite a few different um, graphic elements that need to be created as we do this. 
And in addition, we've also got the actual record types. So we've got here another record type. It's similar to this frame here. Um, we can see that this frame doesn't have any allowance for the tabs, and this one does. This one does. Um, this one doesn't. So we can see that there's various elements that are quite similar, uh, but they do have some subtle differences. And we'll make the most of that. You can see here, this record uses a different uh, record detail sheet from um, this one. We can see here that we probably have to uh, work on the um, field light definition or field dark. That one is actually for uh, the table frames. We're going to have to work on that and make sure that that works neatly there. So if we go into NVCs, which is going to be another um, important element of this rule set, we can see that they share the same frame as our tables do. So there's um, a number of things where this commonality <coughs> there already, and we want to reuse that. So um, I'll later on in another video, we'll also talk about how to find the names of all of these different elements. Um, thank you for watching, and tomorrow's session will be back to a rule set wizard and coding session. And it's quite an in-depth, quite a detailed one. It's going to be hard going for a lot of people. And um, don't worry if that's the case, because it's not required to code to that level um, to get a, quite a functional character sheet. I wanted to do something extra. I wanted to do some coding that was a little bit more advanced. And, and so I've explored that and recorded it for that session. Uh, I'll see you all tomorrow.